previous video and uh, today I am going to still continue with uh, idioms, the third part and uh, the idioms that I am going to cover on are uh, the insects, numbers and parts of the body. So let's get going. Insects are the largest family of living beings on earth. From the tundra region to the hot desert, we always find a beetle or a bug, a fly or a moth everywhere. So here are some creepy crawly idioms for all of you. Ants in your pants. Now this means someone who is very very restless. So this idiom comes from the stone age when man used to live in caves along with all these insects and ants as well. So um, the ants were in the pants and imagine when ants are in the pants, nobody can stay calm. So this idiom comes from there. To bug someone. This means to irritate someone. Yes. Um, this idiom comes from Africa where the word annoy means bugger or bugle. So when the Europeans were exploring Africa, they coined this uh, idiom uh, to bug someone, means to irritate someone. The other one is butterflies in my stomach. So this means when a person is very nervous or uneasy about something, so we uh, quote uh, that I have got butterflies in my stomach. Our stomach is considered to be a bag like hollow structure and uh, the uneasiness or the nervousness is attributed uh, to a lot of animals inside. So butterflies is one of them. When a person is very hungry, you tend to say, um, one tends to say that, uh, you know, I have rats in my stomach, I'm really hungry. Yes, so even uh, this idiom uh, is generated this way. Catch more flies with honey than with vinegar. So this means that it is always uh, fruitful to be polite with someone uh, so that you can gain more. Vinegar is always uh, associated with impolite people because it is sour in nature whereas honey is sweet so it is associated with polite people or uh, the people who are very well mannered. So even the flies and the insects, they get attracted to honey. So it's always beneficial to be polite and well-mannered because more people will be attracted towards you rather than being impolite. The last one in this section is to stir up the hornet's nest. It means uh, to cause some kind of trouble. Yes, so hornet is a kind of bee. If you tend to poke and prod its nest, so obviously it's going to get wild, so it's better not to uh, interfere or indulge in causing trouble to somebody because if you do, you are actually going to make that situation quite unpleasant. Now, now is the time for idioms on numbers. Numbers play an integral part of our life. We count, yes? We add, we subtract, we multiply, we divide and we do so many complex uh, number problems, don't we? Yes, we do. So, uh, let's add these numbers to our language. The first one is back to square one. Have you ever played board games like Ludo and Snakes and Ladder? Yes. So, uh, if there is some kind of a mistake or maybe in, uh, in case of a snakes and ladder game, the snake bites us. So, we just go down to some other square at a lower number and we tend to lose the game. Yes. So, uh, this means that we are again back to square one. Yes, means we are again back to the beginning. Yes. So, next one is. 40 winks. Yes, you've heard it right. I'm talking about winks. Uh, way back uh, in the ancient centuries, uh, winks were considered to be short sleep. Okay, so uh, in today's language, what we call a power nap. Okay, so sleeping for a very short period of time means 
to take a 40 wink sleep. Yay! On cloud 9. Yes, this idiom got, uh, this idiom originated uh, through the Jews uh, who consider that um, the number 9 is uh, referred to the highest heaven. Yes, so and heaven is of course considered to be a very good place, a joyous place. So uh, a person whenever is on cloud 9, so he is in extremely uh, excited and a joyous and a happy mood. One track mind. Now this means any person who thinks only in one direction. Uh, you must have seen a railway line. So there are two tracks in that for a train who can actually uh, go in a particular direction. And there is another track where uh, uh, the other train can come from the opposite direction. So two uh, trains can cross one another in opposite directions. So imagine if there is just one track. Yes, so there is space only for one train to move. So that is called a one track mind. Two, two, tango. Okay, so it's T-W-O-2, T-O-2, tango, T-A-N-G-O. A very good example of alliteration. Yes, so this idiom comes from South America. Tango is actually a dance form from South America. It is one of the dance forms. Uh, South America is famous for other others as well. In this dance form, uh, we always need two people to uh, participate. A single person cannot dance a tango. So whenever we require two people to accomplish a particular ta task, so we always say two to tango. The last one in the numbers category is two-faced means a person who is very deceitful or dishonest. Yes, so uh, people tend to be two-faced. Why? Because uh, they talk to you uh, uh, about a particular thing and then maybe they can just mold it or in their own way and tell your friend about the same thing in some other way. Yes, so the person is being very deceitful, very dishonest. So uh, he has, he or she has two faces. So that's why the idiom two-faced. Now let's talk about the idioms on parts of the body. Our body is considered to be uh, a temple. It is a very fascinating thing which has been made by God. And we still are quite inquisitive as to how God has uh, thought or made, it's, uh, made it to function. Yes, so let's add uh, a lot of elements of these body parts to our language. So the first in this category is to bite your tongue. Yes, can you actually imagine uh, talking while biting your tongue? No, that's not possible at all. So this idiom means that one has to take back his or her own words because he or she has said something bad about someone. Yes, so one needs to bite his or her tongue if you have spoken ill. Born with a silver spoon in his mouth. Now this means somebody who is very rich, okay, uh, born with all the facilities. Uh, in olden times, people used to give their kids with uh, silver spoons to play with. Yes, so they were the kids of very rich uh, people. So that's, that's why uh, to born with a silver spoon in a mouth means to, uh, to be born with a lot of facilities around. Cold feet. It means when someone is very scared and petrified of doing something. Yes, so imagine having cold feet. We will not be able to move anywhere. Yes, we won't be able to uh, perform any kind of task. Why? Because we are scared. To find tooth and nail. Now this means to have a very fierce war or a very fierce fight. Uh, we must have seen, I'm sure, some animals fighting. So they use their nails, they use their claws. So it's a very fierce, 
uh, uh, you know fight which they have that's why uh, whenever we have a very fierce uh, verbal argument a verbal spat as we say or maybe a physical fight so it can be fierce both ways when they are actually uh, you know completely involved in it and we just want to win it so it's like a, a tooth and nail battle get something off your chest now this means that uh, whenever we are we feel guilty about something or maybe there's something uh, we need to share with someone yes uh, uh, you know we need to take it out of our heart because we are, uh, uh, otherwise we tend to feel uh, you know upset and that brings a lot of heaviness on our heart so you know just trying to vent it out uh, is the meaning of this idiom head and shoulders above someone in olden days people were under this impression that taller people were better than the shorter ones though there was no uh, logical reasoning behind this but yes people had this in mind so uh, to be uh, you know head and shoulders above someone means to be better than the other person the next one in line is keep a stiff upper lip okay it means to be brave uh, to have a lot of guts in times of trouble yes whenever we are weak uh, emotionally or whenever we are tensed about something uh, our lips tend to quiver and they shake especially the upper one so whenever we are uh, you know in that mode of uh, uh, you know to fight something to fight a situation not you know not a physical battle a physical war but yes uh, an emotional uh, uh, problem whenever we have to face so we need to keep our upper lip stiff so that uh, we feel brave we are brave and we can get over that problem asa pull your leg this means to tease someone in olden days like way back in the 18th century uh, the 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 most practical joke was to trip a person though actually it is not considered to be decent but yes it was a very uh, famous joke at that time so you know whenever we want to tease someone we say that you know uh, now i'm going to pull your leg or please don't pull my leg yes tickle your funny bone uh, this means to make a person laugh so do you know what is the bone at the back of our elbow called yes it is called the humerus and humor and humerus they sound similar though of course with different spellings yes so i'm sure the one who must have uh, invented this saying uh, knew the connection of uh, these two words so that is why it is called you know to make somebody laugh and happy the last one for today's video is zipper your mouth now zip is used to conceal something close something yes so when a person has to zip a mouth of course he or she needs to shut up okay so that's why we uh, tend to use this zip your mouth or zip your mouth whenever we want the other person to just keep quiet so uh, i'm sure you would uh, be uh, enjoying these idioms and will be using them in your language too and uh, keep waiting for my next video which is going to be the final part of the idioms till then goodbye